Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. You know, we so often take the Holy Spirit for granted. So, I want to talk to you about what life would be like if the Holy Spirit were to leave the earth. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship, and then we're getting into this message. Let's worship now. In your presence I quiet my soul And I hear your voice In my spirit I hear the sound Of salvation song God the Father is seated upon a throne. God the Son sits at the right hand of the Father. God the Holy Spirit dwells in you. 
Psalm chapter 139, verse 7 teaches us that you cannot escape from the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the omnipresence of God. And as I was saying just a moment ago, we so often take that presence for granted. We ignore the Holy Spirit. We put Him off for another time. And sometimes I think we fail to appreciate just how wonderful it is to have His presence and power in our lives. So, I want to talk to you about this idea. What would happen if the presence and power of the Holy Spirit were suddenly lifted from the earth? Now, I want to assure you, Jesus said that when He sends the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will never leave us. Those who receive the Holy Spirit are not abandoned by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will never abandon the true believer. That's a fact. That's a promise from Jesus Himself. But I think that as we begin to consider what life would be like without the Holy Spirit, that that consideration will produce an appreciation for who He is and what He does in our lives. Now, the Scripture does talk about a time when the Holy Spirit moves aside. As I said, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. But there is a moment in time when the Holy Spirit will allow His influence to be set aside to allow for certain end-time events to take place. Watch this, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. For this lawlessness is already at work secretly, and it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps out of the way. Then the man of lawlessness, or the Antichrist, will be revealed. But the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming. Again, that's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7-8. through 8. The Holy Spirit is the one here upon the earth, and his influence is holding back the influence of the man of lawlessness. So, there is a time that's coming when the Holy Spirit will remove his influence. Of course, as I said, he's omnipresent, but his influence will be allowed to be removed. The Holy Spirit will choose to not influence the earth in that specific way. But while we don't know when this will happen, I do want to consider this idea. What would life be like for the believer if the Holy Spirit were to just someday say, you do it on your own? And one more time, I want to assure you that's not going to happen. But again, I think in considering these things, we learn to appreciate who He is. First and foremost, we see in John chapter 16, verses 7-11, through 11, that the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts the world of sin. Now imagine that the conscience, the collective conscience of mankind, is suddenly no longer moved by God's holy standard, suddenly no longer influenced by the voice of the Holy Spirit we would see sin increase in the earth like never before. We would see people becoming so cold-hearted, so violent, so wicked, so perverse, that life would be unbearable. Just like Abraham, by you and I being in this nation or in this world, we are holding back the judgment of God. That holiness in us is the preservation of a nation. But if the Holy Spirit were to suddenly remove His convicting powers, suddenly no one would feel shame for their sin. And those things that are done in secret would be done out in the open. And society would collapse. John chapter 14 verses 15 through 18 teaches us that the Holy Spirit brings comfort. Imagine in those moments of sadness and sorrow, those moments of isolation and loneliness, those moments where you feel like quitting because the weight of the world is on you. Imagine in those moments not having the presence of the Holy Spirit to comfort you, to assure you, and to let you know that the future is still in God's hand. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray according to Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. He's the spirit of prayer and supplication. Imagine trying to pray without the help of the Holy Spirit. You would run out of things to say. 
You would run out of passion to fuel your prayer life. Not only that, you would forget to pray because it's the Holy Spirit who reminds you to pray. You would even lose the desire to pray because the Holy Spirit wouldn't be there to cultivate that desire. He's our teacher, according to John chapter 14, verse 26. Imagine that the Holy Spirit wasn't there to walk you through Scripture. Imagine trying to grasp deep spiritual truths without the Holy Spirit teaching you in your spirit to understand those truths. Imagine not being able to comprehend salvation, not being able to comprehend the gifts of the Spirit, not being able to comprehend surrender and sacrifice and ministry and how to overcome those things in yourself that you want to overcome. Imagine having to go about revelation without the Holy Spirit. Why, we would have no true teaching. We would be confused and anyone and everyone would give their opinion and we wouldn't know who was telling us the truth. Our ears would be inclined to hear heretics and false teachers without the Holy Spirit saying, that's not right. We would be easily manipulated by people who were greedy, by people who had selfish ambition, by people who preached just for their own gain because the Holy Spirit wouldn't be there to say there's something not right about this. He wouldn't be there to teach, to remind, and to reveal. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us power for holy living. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 teaches us that if we live by the Spirit, we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Think about how difficult it is to fight temptation even with the Holy Spirit present in our lives. And it's only difficult because we haven't learned to surrender. But imagine now trying to overcome sin and temptation without the Holy Spirit giving you that new nature, without the Holy Spirit giving you that desire to overcome sin and temptation. Those vices, those perversions, those habits, those secret sins would swallow your entire life and you'd sink into the darkness of the ugliness of that sin. John 4.24 tells us that we are to worship in spirit and in truth. So it is the Holy Spirit who helps us to worship. Imagine not being able to see the glory of God. Imagine not being in awe of who He is. Imagine not being thankful for everything that God has given to you. Imagine that you go into a worship service. Sure, the musicians can play skillfully and the singers can sing skillfully. But imagine having no inspiration whatsoever and having no motivation to lift up the name of Jesus. There would be nothing glorious on our lives. There'd be nothing grand. There'd be nothing majestic. There would be nothing big. And there'd be nothing that beautiful as the glory of God. We wouldn't see it because the Holy Spirit wouldn't be there to reveal it. And our worship would be hollow, cheap, simple singing. We couldn't worship without the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 teaches us that He is the Spirit of adoption, that He causes us to cry, Abba, Father. Can you imagine living your whole life in doubt, always wondering if you were truly saved, always fearful always concerned that maybe you missed it. Maybe you're not really a child of God. Maybe God hasn't accepted you. If the Holy Spirit is the one who assures us of our salvation, can you imagine living your whole life paranoid? Wondering if you've actually made it? Wondering if you're actually going to heaven? Having no assurance of where you'll spend eternity despite praying again and again and seeking God again and again? That would be tormenting. You wouldn't sleep at night. You wouldn't enjoy your day. You would go through life worried about eternity without ever having that inner witness of the Holy Spirit, that assurance of your salvation. You would go through wondering about your identity. You would go about your day wondering about who you belong to, not really knowing if God has accepted you or not. That's what it would be like without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit performs the miraculous through us. Galatians chapter 3, verse 5 teaches us that He's a miracle-working Spirit. Imagine facing impossible situations and being left alone to face them. When you and I get into a situation now and we're faced with difficult circumstances, we don't have to worry because we know that ultimately 
The Holy Spirit's going to come through in the way that we need Him to. That whatever we're facing that seems impossible, that even if the worst should happen, that we're still in good hands and that God still is a God of the miraculous and that there's nothing too difficult for Him. Imagine losing that hope. Imagine losing that sense of security. A hopeless life is no way to live. Think about the fact that whenever you face tragedy or a circumstance that was too difficult, you wouldn't know where to turn. And you would think, this is it. Imagine that the one who makes a way where there seems to be no way wasn't making ways for you any longer. The Holy Spirit gives us faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 teaches us that He is the Spirit of faith. Imagine never having faith for anything that God promised. If you have not faith, it might as well be that God never promised a thing. And if you didn't have the faith to believe those promises, how could you ever live in those promises? He gives you boldness. Acts chapter 2, we see that Peter was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And though he was one who denied the Lord, suddenly he became someone who proclaimed the name of Jesus before thousands. Imagine trying to share the gospel, knowing that people are going to hell and not having the inspiration or the boldness to share that gospel message. And when you shared it, the Holy Spirit wouldn't be there to draw them to salvation. The Holy Spirit wouldn't be there to convict their hearts. He wouldn't be there to reveal that message to them deep within. It would simply be you communicating an idea sheepishly, timidly, with no power. The Holy Spirit teaches us the will of God. Psalm 143, verse 10, teaches us that. Imagine not knowing the direction of your life. Not, imagine not knowing what pleases or displeases God. You're just left wondering if you're angering the most powerful being in all of existence. You're just left wondering if you're disobeying the one who has it all planned out perfectly. That's no way to live. If the Holy Spirit were to suddenly leave the earth, the world would spiral into perversion. You would lose all comfort. You wouldn't be able to pray. You wouldn't be able to understand God's word. You wouldn't be able to live holy. You wouldn't be able to worship. You would be constantly wondering about your salvation. You would have no hope because there would be no such thing as the miraculous. You couldn't have faith to believe any of the promises of God. You couldn't have boldness to share the salvation message. And you couldn't know what direction God wanted you to go in life. That's what it would be like if the Holy Spirit were to suddenly leave the earth. Now think about this. The Holy Spirit hasn't left. And not only has He not left the earth, He hasn't left you. My friend, I want to encourage you. Having considered these things, begin to appreciate the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that the Holy Spirit has not left us. We thank you that we don't have to live without the Holy Spirit, that we don't have to live without His power. And my prayer today, Lord, is so simple. Help us to appreciate the precious Holy Spirit. Help us to acknowledge and honor His presence and power. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like to join Spirit Church, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Scroll down toward the bottom of the page. You'll see a form. It's absolutely free. Fill out that form and you are a member of Spirit Church, and you'll begin receiving Spirit Church on a weekly basis right to your email inbox. You'll get the lesson, you'll get the worship, you'll get even event announcements, you'll get all of that in one neat email on a weekly basis. So join Spirit Church today. Almost 15,000 members now from around the world join the Spirit family. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. And now I want to read your comments and these comments come from my last teaching, How to Pray in the Holy Spirit. If you want to remove all those barriers that hinder your prayer life, 
And make sure you go and watch that teaching, How to Pray in the Holy Spirit. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you're watching. Make sure you're connected to us. When you do subscribe on YouTube, make sure to click that notification bell. And if you'd like me to potentially read your comment on next week's edition of Spirit Church, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section right now. Here are the comments from last week's teaching, How to Pray in the Holy Spirit. Emily Laramore wrote, Amen. Thank you for this powerful teaching, Brother David. Surrender is truly one of the biggest things that helped me in my prayer life. I just want to thank you for being a huge part of my spiritual growth. God bless you. Well, Emily, it's an honor and a privilege to play even a small role in your journey. We give all the glory to God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Murta Yanez writes, Thank you, David, for this powerful teaching. When the Lord put it in my heart to know the Holy Spirit more, he led me to your ministry. I'm so grateful to be connected with you, your teachings, your obedience to help people know the Holy Spirit. The more I hear about the Holy Spirit, the more I want to develop a closer relationship with Him. May God continue to bless you, your family, and your ministry. Well, Murda, this is the mandate God gave us to introduce His Holy Spirit to our generation. And we like to say this is the Holy Spirit's channel. He can touch people through it, teach people through it. Whatever he wants to do, it's all his. Jethro Rubio writes, Pastor David, thank you for the word of God. I'm so blessed. The questions in my mind were answered when you preached about this topic. God bless you, anointed man of God. Well, Jethro, thank you for watching Encounter TV. And the final comment comes from Mary Lugemba, who writes, God bless you, Pastor David, for the amazing message and brothers Stephen and Nick for the music. The word was really encouraging, especially how you reminded us that the Holy Spirit prays for us better than anyone else could. Blessings from Ireland. Well, Mary, we're so thrilled to know that this ministry's helped you and that God's touched your life through the message. And now I want to say a quick word to all of you watching this. And you are not watching this by accident. You're here for a purpose and a reason. I believe God's linked us. And so I think you should get linked with this ministry. That connection you sense, that's a spiritual connection. The difference you sense about the ministry, that's the presence of the Holy Spirit. You want to grow spiritually. You want to go deeper. But you also want to stay balanced in the Word of God. I'm telling you, this is the ministry to connect with. And we need your help. We need you to join our cause because there's a lot that needs to be done. There's a lot of darkness that's permeating the globe right now. And you can do something about it. You're not helpless. You're not powerless. You're not alone. It's not as if we just should just sit back and watch the world be overtaken by the enemy. No, we can do something. You can do something about it right here, right now. So if you've ever been frustrated with the way things are going, just know you can do something. And that something is partnering with this ministry. I want you to join hands and link hearts with thousands of believers all around the world. Together, we can do more than we could ever do alone. It's you and I with the help of the Holy Spirit. That's what makes it work. And so I need your help. I need you to join this cause. I need you to join our army of supporters, the thousands of believers all around the world who are behind this. This ministry is growing. It's thriving. It's expanding and it's impacting lives all around the world with high impact, high efficiency, good stewardship, and laser focus on a vision to win souls and build believers through events and media. So help us do it. We give away all the videos for free, all the live streams for free, all the events are free. The Holy Spirit School, which is our online Bible school, it's free from start to finish. There's nothing that we charge for on the media or in the Department of Events. And that's because freely we receive, so freely we give. How we pay for it, how we keep it all going is by people like you. It's you. You are the one who's going to help us spread this and keep this going. So you may say, well, how do I get involved? How, how, how can I make a difference? And I don't want you to discount yourself because you might say, well, you know, I can only do a little bit, so it's not going to count. But do you realize that it's all of us together doing just what we can that makes the difference? So I'm going to ask you something. And I want you to consider it. Ask the Lord to help you consider it. I want to ask you to become a partner with this ministry for $10 a month. Now, some people are struggling. Some people are worried about their financial future. Some are secure and some are doing well. 
But all of us can do something, which is why we set it at around $10 a month for monthly partnership. I'm asking you to sign up to become a monthly supporter for at least $10 a month. When you sign up to become a monthly supporter of this ministry, you get access to our monthly Zoom calls. That's exclusive for just partners. You get a 10% discount off all ministry apparel. You get event seat reservations. The events are free, but the seats go fast. Partners get them saved. You get an exclusive monthly email update. You're going to get a beautiful Dove lapel pin that you can wear to show your support of this ministry. And most importantly, you're helping to fund all the content. You're helping to win souls, build believers, see people saved, healed, delivered, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and equipped for ministry. I'm telling you, there's no better way to spend that $10 a month. So you get to know you're helping people. You get all of those partner benefits, and you get the content too, because you're helping to fund this, and the content itself will bless you. That's better than any Netflix subscription, any gym membership, any subscription to anything. This is what you want to do. So $10 a month, you can do that now by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. When you go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner, you can see all the partner benefits. Now, $30 a month or more, you get all those benefits, plus you can choose a book. We'll sign it and send it to you as our thank you gift. At $100 or more a month, your discount doubles, 20% off all ministry apparel, plus you get not one, but four books, all of them signed as our thank you to you for being our partner. Now, there are people watching. You can do those larger gifts. Someone's watching right now. God's blessed you in business. God's blessed your organization. God's blessed what you do. He's blessed the work of your hands. He put those resources in your hands that you might be one who funds the kingdom in these last days to reach a generation. There's no better way to invest it. So I'm asking everyone, from those who are well off to those who are not so well off, all of us can do something. But I am asking you to do something. Partner with any amount or give any amount one time. DavidHernandezMinistries.com slash donate to give a one-time gift. DavidHernandezMinistries.com slash partner to become a monthly supporter. Whatever you do, please do it right now and help us continue to take the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit all around the world through events and media. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.